I know when you've written a nice, not a nasty tweet about somebody, they just don't know how to arrest you for mm. doing anything else. Mm. Yeah, anyway. Checking out their own force members. Aren't well, they? exactly, and that's mm. keeping them busy. Um, who's your second nominee, please? Well, my second one is uh, Jacinda Ardern. Ah, so yes. She was questioned recently. She's an old favourite. Yeah. <laughs> has, she been, has she been here before? <laughs> she has, actually, week? yeah. Particularly okay. when she told everyone not to talk to their neighbours, which she did a few weeks back. Stay two metres away from anyone you pass. Stay local and do not congregate. Don't talk to your neighbours. Yeah, that was a low moment, but we've oh, got another one now. Yeah, go on. I think we've got a worse one. Have we? So she was asked recently about the country's plans to change from um, elimination strategy to rolling out the vaccine, you know, because it's all changed in New Zealand. And the interviewer put it to her that they're creating two classes of people, oh, yeah. the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, and there will be more rights for the vaccinated. And then she was like, oh, but, you know, you probably don't see it that way. And then she's got a hand off. She goes, yep. That is the way it is. Yep, that's, that's how, how we see it. it. So you basically see it, this is going to be like, well, it's almost like uh, you probably don't see it like this, the two different classes of people. If you're vaccinated or if you're unvaccinated, you have all these rights. If you are vaccinated... That you... is what it is. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. Can you just... yeah. You're right. Yeah, I saw it. it she's, also been in here. Astonishing. she's also been in here before for making the ludicrous statement, which she, which she did about several months ago, saying basically that any information that didn't come from the government about COVID was not trustworthy information, wow. and the only place you could get information about COVID is from the government. I want to send a clear message to the New Zealand public. Um, we will share with you the most up-to-date information daily. You can trust us as a source of that information. Uh, you can also trust the Director General of Health and the Ministry of Health. For that information, do feel free to visit at any time to clarify any rumour you may hear, covid19.govt.nz. Otherwise, dismiss anything else. We will continue to be your single source of truth. We will provide information frequently. And you go, oh, really? Another person that's clearly been reading too much Chinese politics. Yeah. Um, so th this is a woman that seems to be proud that she's creating, in effect, yeah. uh, an apartheid, a, a two-tier apartheid within New Zealand. Yeah. Well, she, get, she gave two reasons. One is to increase vaccine uptake, which is the reason that's being touted kind of quite honestly around the world now. It's, it's a tool to coerce people into something they may or may not want to do. Mm. And the other reason was that it was to give confidence. And, and actually, we have managed very high vaccination rates, generally, without the use of certificates. But actually, what it's become clear to me is that they're not just a tool to drive up vaccines. They're a tool for confidence. Now, this is the reason that actually really creeped me out, because the, the madness of the lie that vaccine passports would create confidence uh, or provide safety is, is the lie that underpins the biosecurity state, and I think it's quite scary. Mm. It's more scary even than the segregation. So they're going to be changing to a traffic light system, and when it's red... OK, that means that people who are unvaccinated will have all these restrictions on them. So you won't be able to go to university, mm -hmm. you won't be able to use close contact businesses, which are gyms, restaurants, there's probably others. And people won't be able to even meet privately in groups of more than 10. Goodness so me. these are huge And this includes changes. people, presumably, who can't have a vaccination rather than those who have just said, I don't want one. I'm not sure if they're going to allow medical exemptions, but the thing is, um, exemptions haven't really been very popular wherever vaccine passports are rolled out. Uh, rolled out. So, yeah. for instance, you know, there don't seem to be any uh, religious exemptions, right. which there would have been just, you know, in the pre-pandemic right. era, there would have been religious exemptions Definitely. for vaccines. So there's been lots of opposition in New Zealand, but not for the same reason as right. me. Um, people are saying it holds the vaccinated to ransom because they're not even going to move to this system until 90% in each region are vaccinated. Mm. So it's almost like the opposition is we need to just... Yes. We need to go and harder, we need to go faster. for a long time in that faster. part of the world, they didn't actually have the vaccination rates that we had because I was told by Helen Dale... Um, that in Australia there's quite a lot of reticence about vaccinations in general, mm. not amongst people that you would normally sort of regard as anti-vaxxers, but, but, but by quite a lot of middle-class educated people who yeah. don't, for some reason in Australia, like getting vaccines. But this yeah. also from a government in that country that for months and months and months was uh, purporting to support the principle of zero COVID, which mm. is a really scary and dumb approach to take. Well, they on did the basis get zero COVID for a while, didn't they? And then they got one case and locked down the entire country. It's never going to be sustained. Go, it's never going to be sustained. No. Is it? it's, a, it's a ludicrous endeavour. A seems, ludicrous endeavour. I mean, I feel bad, though, because, you know, I always wanted to kind of... I know some people from Australia and New Zealand and have good friends who've come from there and I've always wanted to go, but now I kind of don't want it. No. I don't, I don't want to waste yeah. my time going there. Not that any of us will be allowed to for many years. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know so, really? Especially not if they check your social media profile and she sees she's been Plank of the Week. Yes. But, um, she never it, won it yet, though. 
it was it was scary. In aspect. <laughs> this push towards the biosecurity state, the segregation, but more than that, the clip is weird. Mm. She's like rubbing her hands. She's literally mm. rubbing her hands. All the body language is kind of off, and she seems really proud mm. about it. And she's talking about doing this to her own country yeah. with glee. So she's my second point. I think of the this week. is the trouble with a lot of leaders. Nicola Sturgeon has that same kind of glint in her eye. They really mm. quite enjoy being in charge of everyone. They yeah. think they are. Mm. Yeah. Because people have allowed them to think that. Mm. Whatever Whereas in the... England, I don't get the sense that Boris Johnson feels like he is in charge because I think he's never been in charge no, of anything. He's definitely not in charge. He is he? That's the problem. Yeah, with Boris that's Johnson. right. Yeah. But he doesn't, at least whatever you may say about him, um, he doesn't have that not zealous, it's no. kind of zealous look you know yeah. that no. these guys have yeah, yeah, yeah. he looks more like somebody's chained a puppy to the radiator in the basement yeah. and he doesn't actually want to give this like it's no, a forced hostage that's right. speech right whereas uh jacinda looks like the one who's actually holding everyone hostage right. she's yeah she just seems to be enjoying it oh too she does much. Yeah, very, very bond villain very much like yeah. very much so and whereas biden has got this other thing where we notice this thing that he does where he leans forward and whispers i got them 1.9 trillion dollars relief so far they're going to be getting checks in the mail that are consequential. And the no. world, and the world you elects. You look a bit odd, mate. The world elects these You people. look a bit mad. Mm. I mean, mm. anyway, so who's your second one? Talking to Boris Johnson, it's Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but not for being a zealot. Segway. No, no, no. Uh, for a couple of reasons, really. So first of all, given... I'm not going to make it. Um, <laughs> now, uh, we've only got about a minute left, right? So we have to decide. Jacinda Ardern... Paul Scholes, Art Institute of Chicago, who wins it? Because oh. the other two will come second and third, and we can agree on that. Which uh, one well, it depends how serious we want to be, because the New Zealand Prime Minister—that's mm. that's a really serious, yeah. scary yes. thing to impart and okay. believe. Isn't okay. it? So she gets my vote. Right. Yeah, I, me too, because really? she just okay. looked um, really creepy, psychopathic, mm -hmm. and honestly, I'm scared for the people of New Zealand yes. that yeah, she's what's she going to do next. Minister. Yeah, yeah. Well. Exactly. When when this is over, when this when this weapons. is over, she whimpers and crosses yeah. her fingers. What is she going to do but next? This is what these people want, right? They don't want there to be any more elections ever. Oh, we can't have any elections because of COVID. Of course not. So yeah. I'll just stay in charge, shall I? That's what they like, I think. I agree. I think Jacinda Ardern wins yeah. it. Uh, Art Institute of Chicago third, uh, Paul Skull second. So well done, Jacinda. Don't talk to your neighbours. <laughs> Uh, Jacinda Ardern wins Plank of the Week. So thanks very much to my two guests, Laura Dosworth and Russell Quirk. A great show, I have to say. Uh, we'll see you next time.